All right, so now we're going to get to work on, you know, kind of working some problems here. And so what I want to uh, focus on here as we get into these problems is this little aside right over here, which I can't move by itself, but where I say the head loss and expansion is V1 minus V2 squared over 2G. Okay, so we're going to use that um, a good bit, and especially in this first problem. So um, just kind of bear with me, and let's, uh, let's kind of uh, jump into this problem. All right. So we've got this, um, we've got two reservoirs. Um, I don't know if the reservoirs really have a name, um, but the reservoir on the left, I'll just call reservoir one maybe. I, I don't know. Um, we'll call this point one and we'll call this point two, I guess. Um, and so the, the fluid is flowing from reservoir one to reservoir two. By the way, when I put one and two there, I'm already thinking in terms of energy equation. Um, and, you know, and I chose those points because they're, on the surface, so figuring out, you know, there's no V squared on 2G on the surface, and there's no pressure on the surface, so those are relatively easy to work with, okay, so, uh, or at least the pressure is gauge. Um, anyway, so what I'm told here is that the elevation of the, of the, ele of the reservoir on the right is 110 feet, and I'm asked for what is the reservoir, what is the elevation on the reservation on the left, in order to get a flow rate of 16 CFS. Okay, knowing that as the fluid flows, in this case it's water, although it doesn't say that, let's just assume that it's water. Okay. Um, which I think, you know, having reservoirs of uh, something other than water, well, I guess, you know, it, it happens. Anyway, um, so we've got these uh, reservoirs and it's flowing through a pipe that gets progressively larger. So we've got uh, the area of pipe A, the cross-sectional area is one square foot, the cross-sectional area of pipe B is two square feet. And then we've got this HF, which we haven't had to deal with yet. Um, that is the friction loss along the pipe. Okay, and so we will have uh, HF in pipe A and we'll have an HF in pipe B. Okay, and it is a function of the length and the diameter, um, as well as this uh, constant up front, 0 0.02. Um, Pretty soon we're gonna learn how to how to figure out what that constant is, and it's not an easy process, but we'll get to that, okay? And the first pipe is 200 feet, the second pipe is 300 feet long, and then we've got DA and DB. Okay, we need DA and DB because they're gonna plug in up here. Okay, we need those diameters. So rather than spend a lot of energy getting that, just note that, um, I'm not gonna show this calculation, but you have the area, and if it's a, it's a pipe, it's round, so you can do area equals uh, pi d squared over four, and you could back out, calculate that the dA is 1.128 feet, and dB is 1.596 feet. Okay, so those are the diameters of those pipes. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to find the elevation in the reservoir one, and we want to draw the HDL, EGL. Now what I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to make a point of where we have head losses, so we've got these, you know, what, well, we haven't, I haven't called them this yet, but these are called uh, minor losses. So we've got minor losses. Basically, we've got two expansions, two places where the pipe expands, and I've got an entrance loss right here. Okay, so I'm going to kind of dot that in. And what I want you to do with that dot is I just want you to make note that it exists, but we're going to ignore it for now. Okay, so we're going to ignore it both in our calculations and in our HDL, EGL, um, but it should be there. Okay, so uh, we're going to ignore it, but that doesn't mean ignore it overall. It's just that we don't know how to deal with it yet. Or maybe I'll draw it in the HDL, EGL, and I'll just make a note that we're ignoring it. Uh, so that means its, it's value is zero. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is um, in order to figure out what this elevation is, I need to start thinking in terms of the energy going into the system and the energy leaving the system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat um, position one as my in and position two as my out. So that's pretty standard. And we're going to use the energy equation. And this is going to get, well, let's, let's think about this real quick. Okay, so the energy equation. All right, so if we look at this, let's see. So we can, we're just going to kind of do this. It, you can never do this too many times. Okay, the pressures at one and two, they're both in the atmosphere. So we'll make them zero. Okay, because they're gauge pressure. Zero gauge. Okay, Z is what we're looking for, so we'll leave Z1 alone, Z2. Uh, we, could, we could make that the datum. I'm going to go ahead and make it 110 feet, because that way when, the, when I solve for Z1, I've got my answer. 
However, if I make Z1 the, I mean, if I make Z2 the datum, then I get an answer that just tells me how high it is above uh, Z2. And I'd much rather just have it in terms of absolute elevation. Um, what I'm going to do for simplicity, um, and you just have to trust me on this, um, I don't want this lecture to go on forever. So we're just going to assume that these alphas are turbulent. So we're going to make those 1.0 just to, so that we don't have to worry about it. And that's going to be throughout the problem. However, in this case, at position 1 and at position 2, we're at the surface of these reservoirs. Okay, and the surfaces are not moving very much because of the tank or the Tahoe assumption. So it doesn't really matter right here, but it will um, later on. Okay, we'll note that between position 1 and position 2, there is no pump. Okay, we'll note that position between positions 1 and 2, there is no turbine. Okay, so what do we end up with? Well, we end up with Z1 equals 110 feet plus the head loss. Okay, that's nice and easy. So basically what happens is um, this system is being driven by a pressure difference, I mean, excuse me, an elevation difference between Z1 and Z2, and that is being, that is being accounted for in this head loss. Okay, so um, let's see. So now we have to start thinking about that head loss. Okay, and the head loss comes from, as best I can tell, um, we've got, I've drawn two of the sources. We've got head loss here, we've got head loss here, but we've also got head loss along these walls in A, and we get head loss along the walls in B. Okay, so that's four sources of, of head loss, and then the fifth one, which we're going to ignore. So we want to do these kind of one at a time. Okay, so let's, um, let's look at these one at a time. Okay, and I'm going to try to keep the picture in here um, if I can. Um, so let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. So let's get some black. Okay, so head loss in pipe A. Okay, in pipe A. Um, actually, that's going to be an F, a lowercase f. And that lowercase f stands for a friction loss. Okay, and so we're rapidly getting to the part where we're going to start kind of, um, you know, splitting things apart. So if we, if we go over here, we've got an equation, 0 0.02 LA on DA VA squared on 2G. Okay, so this is going to be the first friction term. Okay, so 0 0.02 LA is 200 feet. 200 feet, the diameter of that pipe is 1.128 feet. VA squared is, um, well, we didn't get VA, did we? Okay, well, let's go over here. Let's go ahead and get VA and VB real quick. So VA is going to be equal to Q over A. So like this. And VB is going to be QB, which, of course, is the same, over AB. Okay, so this is 16 CFS over the area B, which is 2 feet squared. This one is 16 CFS over 1 foot squared. So this is 16 feet per second. This one's 8 feet per second. Okay, so those are, those are good numbers that will be useful to us. Okay, so let's go back down here. We're getting all of our head loss terms. And let's try to keep the picture in there in there so we can kind of keep uh, some perspective on what it is we're doing okay so VA is 16 feet per second squared over 2 times well we're in feet per second so it's gonna be 32.2 feet per second squared okay so it looks like we're gonna get a unit in terms of feet here so HFA equals 14.10 uh, feet Okay, that seems like a lot of uh, a lot of elevation just lost in that first pipe. That's only a 200 foot pipe, right? We've lost 14 feet. Okay, so let's go ahead and do let's do the similar calculation, but let's do it for pipe B. So HFB equals 0 0.02 LB over DB times VB squared onto G. Okay, HFB 0 0.02 LB is 300 feet divided by DB. What was the DB? 1.596 feet. Okay, those feet are going to cancel. VB squared is 8 feet per second squared. Squared over 2 times 32.2 feet per second squared. <clears throat> okay, so I'll give myself a little bit of room here. HFB equals 3.74 feet. Boom.
Okay. So that tells us how much I'm losing along those pipes. Okay. Um, what about at the transition from A to B? Okay, so, um, so that's an expansion. So I'm going to call that expansion A to B, maybe? Eh, I don't like that. Let's, um, let's call that the head loss. Um, head loss A to B. Okay. And that's going to be equal to VA minus VB squared on 2g, okay, because that's the expansion loss formula. Okay, notice it doesn't matter which one I call 1, it doesn't matter which one I call 2, okay? So HL comma AB equals, well, VA is uh, 16 feet per second minus 8 feet per second divided by 2 times 32.2 feet per second squared. Okay, oh, that top needs to be squared, so let's, um, let's erase those. Okay, thinking in terms of units, we are going to end up with feet here. HLAB equals 0.994 feet. Okay, HL, okay, this is going to be for B to the, let's just call it exit. Exit equals, okay, we're going to treat it like an expansion, so it's going to go from VB to V tank squared on 2 times 32.2 feet per second squared. Okay. Oh, well, that should be a G, but whatever. Okay. HL exit equals VB, which is 8 feet per second minus 0, because there's no velocity in that tank out there, divided by 64.4 feet per second squared. HL exit then is basically 64 by 64, so it's going to be essentially 1. So 0 0.994, and it turns out to be the same as it was above. Okay, so that means I can go back to this original equation right here. I can bring it all the way down, and I can say that Z1 equals 110 feet plus all these sources of head loss. So the head loss can be expanded into 14.1 feet plus 3.74 feet plus 0 0.994 feet, plus 0 0.994 feet, plus a entrance uh, loss, which we neglected, but we will not worry about that. Okay, so then it equals 129.8 feet. Cool. Okay, so that's pretty great. Now we're going to go back up here, and we're going to draw the HGL and the EGL. Okay, and so let's zoom in. Okay, and we're going to kind of keep track of these numbers because they, they, they kind of help illuminate some things for us. So as always, we're going to start with the EGL. The EGL always starts up here, okay, along the surface. And then there's going to be a loss right here. We're going to ignore that loss, but I'm going to draw it here anyway. So this is an ignored entrance loss. So in this problem, it equals zero. Okay, but that's because we're assuming... Right, so I really shouldn't have drawn it, but I'm going to anyway. Okay, so then along this first pipe, it's narrow, so we're going to lose an awful lot of energy. Boom. Right? Then there's going to be a head loss here. Right? And then we're going to fat pipe, so now we're not going to lose very much. Okay, and then we're going to have another little loss. Uh-oh, what happened? I drew it poorly. Right? Now this is... I drew it poorly on purpose, by the way. But what I want to make a point of is use a, use a little artistic freedom here and come in here and if you draw it poorly, that's okay. Okay, redraw it, right? Give yourself some space. Be easy on yourself, right? So, you know, we can, you know, this is, uh, this is America. You have enough freedom to redraw things. Okay, so here's my water surface. Z is 110 feet. Okay, and here's my EGL coming in. Right? Okay, now note that from here to here, we lost, uh, what was it, 14.0 feet. Right here is zero, 0 0.994 feet. From here to there, we lost, um, how much did we lose? 3.74 feet. So from here to here is 3.74 feet. 
And then right here, we lost 0 0.994 feet, okay? And so that accounts for our total loss going from 129.8 feet, right here, 129.8 feet. Okay, that's the ugliest 129.8 I've ever written, 129.8 feet. Okay, and we just lost it progressively. Now, most of it was lost in this first pipe because the pipe was narrow. Okay? All right, now what? Oh, well, now we're done with the problem. Oh, no, we're not. We need an HDL. Okay, so that was the EGL. So EGL is in red. Usually when you do this, the EGL is going to be in a solid color, and the HDL will be in a dotted. All right, so as we start thinking about the EGL, remember the, I mean, excuse me, the HDL, the only things we want to think about is what is the velocity at that point. Okay, so we're trying to think kind of what is V squared over 2G, because that is the difference between these two. So um, we're just going to subtract V squared over 2G from our EGL. So right in, in this first reservoir, we note that there is no um, V squared on 2G, because we're in this reservoir. Okay, so they're in the exact same point. Um, we'll notice the same will hold in the second reservoir. Okay. So here we go. So ideally that line would be right on top of the other one. Okay. So now we need to start thinking about, okay, well, where is the velocity the biggest? Where is it the smallest, et cetera, et cetera. We'll note that in here, okay, in this large pipe, V squared on 2G is very small. Okay. And in this smaller pipe, V squared on 2G is very large. So what I'm going to note is that the, the, um, the HGL is going to come in and it's going to meet that line right there. Like HGL doesn't have head losses, so it's just going to kind of meet. Okay, boom. Okay. Now, in the meantime, uh, in this other section, this this uh, the HGL has a you know very large V squared on two G, so we're going to make it very large. Okay. Now, ideally, it will be parallel to that other line. I'm obviously not a perfect artiste, and neither are you. Okay, and that's okay. Okay, and so there you go. It would connect the dots. So if you wanted to kind of get at, you know, if somebody said, okay, well, I want you to label all the things in the energy equation or the Bernoulli equation, you'd say, okay, well, here's a datum. And you'd say, well, here's my Z. I mean, it depends on where your point is, right? Um, here's Z. Okay, here's a point, here's, you know, whatever. So these are my Zs. Okay, and they say, okay, well, where's your P on gamma? My P on gamma is going to go from there to the surface, or I mean, excuse me, to the uh, HDL, so that's P on gamma. This is P on gamma, P on gamma, you know, you know, depending on where, where your Z is. Okay, those are your P's on gammas. Okay, now where's your V squared on 2G? Well, that's in between these two, V squared on 2G. Okay, so, um, you know, V squared on 2G. Okay, and what we note here, um, and, you know, I, I hadn't really talked about this, but, you know, so, like, for example, this, this point right here, you can see Z, you can see P on gamma. There's no velocity right there because we're sufficiently far enough from that opening. However, I could have easily picked a Z right here, and note my pressure would have decreased. Right, so this, now how did that work? Well, that's just hydrostatic pressure, right? So the deeper you go in this fluid, the more pressure you have. So if your Z is right here, well, let's make that in uh, black. If your Z is right here, okay, well, then you've got, then your pressure head is P on gamma, okay? It's that, you know, it's um, basically that it's much bigger, right? Okay, so in that case, P on gamma equals the entire depth, okay? It equals depth, so P on gamma equals H. Right, so P equals gamma H. All right, so that's um, the first problem, and let's find some more. All right, so let's scroll over and see what we get. Okay, here's another problem. Okay, and so we've got two reservoirs. I'll go ahead and name them this time, just uh, so that we can uh, kind of refer to them. This will be reservoir one. Let's see reservoir two. Okay, again, that's going to be an energy problem, so I'm going to go ahead and choose point one because it's on the surface. And I'll choose point two, and I'll use those in place of the reservoir names. Um, so that's a sloppy beginning to this problem. <laughs> anyway, um, so I know I've got a flow rate of uh, 0.698 CFS, 
and it tells me you can see the little arrows showing that the flow is going from one to two. Um, now you might be asking yourself, how is the flow going to go from one to two? Notice the elevation in one is lower than the elevation in two. So the total amount of energy in one is less than total energy in two. So that really shouldn't be able to happen, but it can do that because this little thing right here is a pump. Okay. It doesn't really say that it's a pump, but it is a pump. Okay. So what we, what we want to do here, the required here is we want to know how much head does the pump have to add to this system? Um, and actually a better question would be how much power. Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's solve for the power of the pump as well. Okay, just because um, that might be a good thing. And actually, um, let's, add, let's go ahead and solve for the power to the pump. Okay, so how much power do you need to supply this pump? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's assume the pump is 65% uh, efficient. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, I'll, just, I'll just add that in. I have to go get a calculator and solve that when we get there. But luckily, you guys will not have to wait while I do that. Okay, um, we're also going to go ahead and do the EGL, HGL. Okay, so that's a lot of things. But really, the head of the pump, the W, the, the power of the pump, and the power to the pump are things that, um, you know, we have to, um, you know, we kind of have to do all those in turn anyway. So it's no big deal. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start thinking about how to solve this. Okay, so... We're going to solve this by doing the good old-fashioned energy equation. Okay, so we're just going to start um, getting rid of terms. We note that I chose points 1 and 2 in such a way that they were on a part of the atmosphere. Okay, so that, that way I could go ahead and say that these are zero gauge, because I don't have to deal with those punks. Right? Uh, Z1 could be my datum if I wanted it to be, but it's, it gave me it's 90 feet, so I'm going to kind of keep it at 90 feet. Okay, Z2 is at 140 feet. Okay, notice I chose my position such that they would have no velocities, which means these velocity heads are zero because there's no velocity head there, no velocity head there because I'm at the top of a tank. Okay, so that's the, the old tank assumption. We love the tank assumption or the Tahoe assumption. Okay, HP, well, we don't know what HP is. Um, HT, well, there is no turbine. Okay, head loss. Well, we'll get to that, okay? So if I rearrange this, I'm going to get HP equals 140 minus 90 is 50 feet plus the head loss. So basically, this pump has to raise the fluid 50 feet, and it has to deal with the fact that it's going to lose energy on the way there, okay? So just like on the last problem, I'm going to start thinking about, well, okay, so let's look at the sources of head loss. Okay, well, we've got a little bit of head on this entrance. Maybe I'll put that in a dotted line because we're going to ignore that for now. So I'm going to go ahead and put a star and say we're going to ignore that. I'll still draw it on the EGL, HGL, um, because, you know, we probably should. There's technically some head loss inside this pump, but we're only going to worry about the net effect of the pump. So we're not going to worry about that. Um, and then there's a exit loss right here. Okay. And then, of course, we're going to have friction along these pipes. Okay. So all these red things, so there's three places where we're going to have loss of energy. Okay. Um, and so we need to quantify those as best we can. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start working on quantifying those. Okay, so the head loss in the, the pipe looks like this. Okay, the head loss in the pipe equals 0 0.025. Now I'm going to do something a little bit unusual here. I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to leave this as L over D. Okay, I'm not going to call it L pipe 1 and L pipe 2. I'm just going to leave it as L over D for um, briefly, okay? And we'll talk about this in a second. Um, the diameter here is eight inches, so that's gonna be two thirds of a foot, okay? And then we need to do V squared on 2G. Well, what is V squared on 2G? Well, I'm gonna do something else here that you may find useful um, with mathematically with some of these things. Is I note that there's gonna be a lot of V squareds on 2Gs. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure out those V squared on 2G is. So I'm gonna take this, this guy right here, I'm going to say, well, Q equals VA. Okay, now this whole pipe is, um, so Q is 0 0.698 C cubic feet per second. V is what we're looking for. And the area is pi times two-thirds of a foot squared on four. And we'll solve that. And so the velocity everywhere in the pipe everywhere is, um, let's see, oh, yeah, how, 
How convenient. It's almost like somebody contrived this problem. I wonder who that could have been. All right, and then, because it will help me, I'm going to know that V squared on 2G, if I plug that into my calculator just to kind of like make my life a little bit easier, is 0 0.062 feet. Hmm. But when I did this, I was not a fan of significant figures. I should have used at least one more, but probably I prefer to use five. But um, we're going to go with that. I recommend using more. Okay, so we're going to go over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here, 0 0.062 feet. Okay, because this, this equation, if you remember, was hf equals 0 0.025 ln d phi squared on 2g. Okay, so I'm going to solve this. I'm going to say hf equals, okay, and this is an ugly number. Let's see here, 0 0.002 three, two, nine, two. Oh, good. L. Okay, it looks like I did keep some of that, you know, some significant digits. There's five right there. Okay, so cool. All right, now why did I leave it like that? And here's why, okay? So this formula here, and we're going to be playing with this formula a lot lately, uh, soon. Okay, this tells me how much I lose total over length L of the pipe. But, okay, so it tells me how much I will lose total over any length L of the pipe. Okay, this, the way I've left it here, this tells me how much I lose over any length of the pipe. So if I put in, so like if I want for the, the entire length of the pipe here, I've got 1,000 feet and I've got 2,000 feet, I could plug in 3,000 here, and that'll tell me how much energy I lose over the entire 3,000 feet. If I just want to know how much I lose in the first foot, I could plug in one foot right here for L. Okay? So what this is, this is the slope of the EGL. Okay? This is how much energy we lose per foot. Okay? And that is why I like it. Okay? That's why I set it up this way. Okay? Um, no, we will, we will put in the numbers uh, soon enough, but uh, that's just kind of something I wanted to do. Okay? So now I also want to get into the head loss at the exit there, okay? So that, that, this equation accounts for both of my pipes. Okay? In fact, I think I could do that. Um, let's see. It looks like I didn't, uh, I didn't do that here. Well, because I'm some kind of bum. Anyway, so um, head loss in the exit here. Um, well, let's see. So that's going to be velocity in the pipe minus the velocity in the tank. Okay, so this is um, the expansion um, equation over 2g. So head loss at the exit equals the velocity at the pipe, which is just v, essentially, where we, where we solve for over here with this v squared on 2g. Okay, minus the velocity at the tank, tank, which is 0 squared on 2g. So I think if you look at that, you can see that that's the same here as here. So head loss in the exit equals 0 0.062 feet. Okay, probably not going to be really important. Okay, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, so let's go back to my um, equation here. So I've got um, HP equals 50 feet. Now I'm going to take both of these sources of head loss. Okay, because they should add up to, so I'm going to put 0 0.0023292 9, L, in this case it's going to be 3,000 feet plus 0 0.062 feet. So HP equals, um, let's see here. Hmm. So ultimately it's gonna equal 57.0926 feet. So HP equals 57.09, or just 57.1, right? Okay, if we're gonna report that. Okay, so there you go. Boom. Okay. Uh, oh, looks like I had six significant digits, so I got excited. Okay. Um, but that's what we, that's that's the HP. We want the W dot. So how do we get that? We if we look at our notes to get the power to um, to make this thing kind of do its thing, we want to go. Okay, what's the power here? Um, well, the power is going to be equal to gamma Q HP. 
So W dot equals gamma, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Okay, Q, um, Q was 0 .0, 0 0.698. CFS, and then the HP is 57.09. We're gonna go three, because we're gonna go back to the five significant digits rule. And that gives us, okay, this fancy number here, 2486.7. And we notice the cubic feet cancel with the cubic feet. We get pounds per second foot, so foot, pounds per second. And then, I mean, it's a perfectly adequate unit. So if we wanted to report it, we would report that by doing 2490 foot pounds per second. A lot of times people would prefer um, horsepowers. So what you do is you take this number right here and you divide by 550. So if we divide by 550, we get 4.52, 4.52 HP. So either one of these would do as an important answer. Okay, now um, in this case though, we wanted to know, so that's how much energy the pump is supplying to the fluid. Um, but we might want instead to know how much do I have to supply the pump? As, and the pump's only 65% efficient. So if I take that into account, I'm gonna have to supply more than 2490. Um, so I wanna know how much do I have to supply to the pump? Okay, so the pump's gonna, gonna do that much work to the water, but I have to do more work to the pump. So like basically, I'm going to have to plug it in, fully aware that I'm going to have to give it more energy than that. So I'm going to take W dot, I'm going to divide by eta. Okay, so the W dot to pump equals 2486.7 foot pounds per second. And I'm going to divide that by 0 0.65. And um, let's see, oh man, 550, all right. Uh, divide by 0.65 and we get 3825.7 foot pounds per second. Okay, and that's kind of unfortunate, right? Because you know we want to be 100% efficient, but we're not. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and um, round that. Okay, so that's going to be 3830 foot pounds per second. Okay, or if you prefer, we could take this number right here, divide by 550, and we could get W dot to pump equals 6.9. I'll just give you three significant digits because we're, we're at the reporting stage, horsepowers. Okay, so you wanted to do 4.52 horsepowers of work on the um, fluid. We need to supply 6.96 horsepowers to the pump. That's because the pump is only 65% efficient, okay? So that's that, okay? Now, we wanna get back and we wanna think about, okay, this, um, this um, pump, and we wanna do the EGL, okay? And we note that this number, it looks like that number is going to be 7.0, do the math in your own head, right? 7.03 feet. Okay, because if you add that up, it'll be 7.092, right? Yeah, okay. Um, 7.0306, I guess, 06 feet. Okay, we're just gonna call it 7.03, okay? Um, anyway, so we're gonna go up here and we're gonna do the HGL and the EGL. And we're gonna note, first of all, here's the EGL, right? We know, okay, you, hopefully you guys have seen me do this enough now. The EGL is going to start here. Okay, the EGL is going to finish here. Okay, there's going to be a loss of energy right here, although we're going to ignore it. So that is ignored and it's equal to zero in this case, although I'm still drawing it just so that we remember that it's there. Okay, there will be a loss right here. How much is that loss? Well, we solved for it. It was V squared on 2G, so it was um, it's this loss right here. 0 0.062, so it's so tiny that we may not even notice, so 0 0.062 feet, okay? Now everywhere else, 
We are grand total going to lose 7.0306 or 7.03 feet. Okay, now we note that um, we're going to lose one third of that here because that's one third of the total distance and two thirds of it here. Okay, um, we know the slope of that line is this 0 0.002392 line. Okay, and basically we could go, well, we're going to go down like this. Okay, we're going to hit that pump. And then we're going to go down at the same slope. Okay, if I can draw the same slope to my best of, best of my ability. What I recommend on a test is if that you're worried about it, you might even just label this section and be like, you know, those are ones and say one, same slope. Just to let me know. You know, or you might call this one one and call that one two and then say, note that these have the same slope. Okay, and that's totally, completely okay. All right. So now that's the uh, HGL, excuse me, the EGL. I always say the wrong words on those. Um, so just be careful there, EGL. Let's do the HGL. And all we have to do is think about the velocities. Okay, well notice the pipes are the same diameter here. Okay, so the, so the HGL is always going to have the same V squared on 2G. Notice it's going to come in right here. And it's going to be cruising along here. So it needs to be the same distance below the EGL everywhere okay and so once again if we wanted to think about um, pressures in this system we might go okay well here's our here or, or you know anything let's see here's our Z okay going up to the flow okay so those are Z's where's P on gamma well it's right here Okay, and where's V squared on 2G? It's right in here, all right? Okay, now somebody might ask you, um, where is this system most in danger of cavitating? Okay, so if they said, where, where is cavitation most likely? Okay, what you're looking for is where is the pressure the lowest? Okay, what's your answer? Okay, so remember, we're looking at this, this area right in here, and we're trying to say, when are the, when is it the lowest? Okay? And the answer is, the pressure is the lowest right here, right before we get to that pump, and that's very common. Okay? And so basically on the, uh, I guess, the upstream side of the pump, you worry very often. So like a lot of times I'll ask you this on a test, and you're going to draw a little star in the spot with the lowest pressure. And in this case, it's right there. Okay, right. Well, I really, really mucked it up. So let's, um, let's draw a star right there. Okay, and the pump is right here. Okay, and it's right before you get to that pump. And oftentimes that's what a pump does. You put the pump in there right when you're worried about cavitation or something like that, and you just raise the pressure of that whole system right there. Okay, so, hmm. So looking at my last question, it's not really a, it's really an energy equation question. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll call it here. So this will be a, a shorter lesson, but um, you know, this HGL, EGL is kind of a long lesson overall anyway. So anyway, again, as usual, take care of yourselves. Let me know how I can help, um, I hope that this was a good way to present this. If you didn't like this, you can look at last semester's um, uh, videos, which are still available uh, on YouTube. But um, I, think, I think this was a better way to present the HGL, EGL. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well, and as always, take care of yourselves. You're, you are more important than this class. So, um, and I will um, see you guys later. All right.